Hello and welcome to my presentation on Fusion, which is a new language that runs on top of the OpenJDK and then unifies different concepts that we see in programming languages like Java. A bit on background of, on, on me, I don't go, in, go into details. I worked a lot on languages and compilers. Uh, motivation for Fusion is that we see more and more programming languages are getting overloaded with more and more concepts like classes, methods, interfaces, constructors, traits, records, structs, packages, values, and so on. Uh, so Fusion wants to simplify this by basing the language on a single concept, that of a feature. And the next, next aspect is that today's compilers and tools are more powerful than they used to be, and often they make better decisions than developers, so why not let those tools decide how to create the code and create the best possible programs. And our life is more and more depending on software, so our systems have become safety critical, so we need to ensure their correctness. I don't present the full Fusion language here, just a short summary of the main features. So it uses feature as its main concept, Fusion is statically typed. It uses inheritance and redefinition. It by default uses value types, but it also supports dynamic reference types. It encourages immutability and it offloads tasks and decisions to tools as much as possible. The development of Fusion is backed by a company called Tokiwa Software GmbH and we currently have three employees but the team is way too small we are hiring and also we are searching for ways for funding um, this talk is not a fusion language tutorial for an introduction to the language and a tutorial please go online to flung.dev uh, but what i will show in this talk is how java features java maps to fusion features and I'll directly dive into a small example. Here you find a Java class that provides complex numbers based on integers. Uh, and I will show you how such a class would be implemented in Fusion. So first, oops, I don't fit in here, so I move away a bit. So um, uh, similar to what Kotlin uses or what Java records have brought, uh, the syntax of creating a feature is much simplified to a class with a constructor. So the counterpart of a complex like this would be just the code that you see here. Um, next, I've re I'm removing the Java code here that the left side doesn't get overloaded, but I'll leave all the code in on the Fusion code, which is more uh, compact. So next, a Java method here, we add a method radius squared uh, to our complex class in Fusion. How you would do that is very similar. You don't need a return statement. It's just the last statement that defines the returned value. And types in Fusion always go to the right, not to the left side, like in Java. Uh, Fusion simplifies the syntax in several aspects. So semicolons that are at the end of lines are not needed. Uh, similarly, uh, curly braces are optional. They can be left out as long as there is proper indentation of the code. And keywords are introduced where uh, the syntax or the parser would have difficulties otherwise with the lack of curly braces. And then Fusion uses a lot of type inference. So the result type of a feature, for example, doesn't necessarily have to be given explicitly, but it can be inferred from the returned expression. So uh, Java packages in Fusion are also implemented using Fusion features, and that would look like this in our example. Um, for a package, or to model this, uh, the effect of a package, what you would use in Fusion is a so-called unit type feature. That means a feature that has no fields, so no data is stored in instances of my math in this case, uh, 
which means <coughs> there's no memory required to store instances of this feature and there's also no runtime code generated for calls to this feature. But apart from that, you can use this just as any other uh, feature. And unit type features are very important, are used in many contexts in Fusion. That's why I introduced them in a bit more detail here. So next, static methods in Java. <coughs> you can just add them in the class yourself, which in Fusion is not directly possible because a feature that would be added as an inner feature of complex uh, would require an instance of complex to be executed. So instead, um, we <coughs> need to introduce a new feature, which is a unit type feature. Typically, we use the plural form um, of uh, the counterpart complex here. So this feature we call complexes, and we put the origin function or the origin feature in there. Now, since it's a bit inconvenient to have these two terms, complex and complexes, uh, there's a conf convenience routine, a convenience feature that defined that returns an instance of complexes, which is a unit type. So there's no code generated for that. But this way, we can easy, more easily access the origin just by writing complex dot origin. Uh, so now some examples how you would write code using uh, this class in Java. If you would call a constructor, the counterpart in Fusion would be you call a feature or in, 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 actually you call two features. You call the unit feature my math, but that doesn't generate any code and then call complex with the arguments three and four on that. There's more uh, syntactic improvements here in Fusion parentheses and commas in calls are optional. So you can write this just like that. Uh, furthermore, the counterpart to an import statement uh, in Fusion is just an assignment. So we can uh, assign the unit value my mouth to a new field called m and then use m to access this. As I said before, my mouth uh, Instances require no memory and copying them requires no code. So this is all transparent for the generated code. Uh, now calling a, a method in Java corresponds to calling a feature in Fusion. Uh, looks very similar. You don't need the parentheses in these, this case either. Uh, calling a static method uh, in Java requires that we go through uh, the unit feature that we have defined for the static methods. But since we have defined an ali alias feature for that, we can just write complex m.complex.origin in this case. I want to now give you a f an overview of the design of the Fusion tool chain. Uh, we start off with Fusion source code files, and they are processed by the Fusion front end that generates Fusion module files, which is a binary file format similar to class files or jar files, Java modules, and so on. These modules are then processed by the Fusion middle end to create a Fusion application, which is an intermediate representation for a whole application that can go through an optimizer or analyzer to create the Fusion Intermediate representation format that then is the input to different backends that create executable code, draft files, binaries, uh, or similar. Um, to interface Java code from Fusion, there's a, call, uh, a, a tool called FC Java. Uh, which creates Fusion code for a Java module to call into that Java model. And I want to get, present this tool to you. So, so this tool uses a Java module file and creates Java source, not Java, Fusion source code to access the code in that module file. So with that, 
you can do things like infusion, access, Java lang system out, and call a method like print, print line on that, uh, basically access the Java world. And let me explain to you how this tool works, what kind of code it, it creates. So I'll give you an uh, example class here and we'll show you the approximate code that is generated for this class by the FC Java tool. So uh, for a package XY, uh, this will create a feature that is surrounded by uh, unit type features in java.x.y and in there declare a feature my class uh, that has the uh, methods declared in that class, declared as inner features of that outer feature. Um, two important things here is the void type in Java is a unit type in Fusion, while Fusion's void type is quite different. Uh, Fusion's void type is a type that has no values, so you can imagine this as the type of functions like system.exit, functions that never return. And the reason why this is used here as an argument to the my class feature is that we want to avoid that the developer directly calls this and by providing a void type argument we make it impossible to call this uh, feature because there's no way to produce a void value. The only way to create uh, instances of feature my class is via the constructor wrapper generated by the FC Java tool, which will be shown next. Um, so for everything that is sta static and that is includes the constructors, a second feature is, cre uh, is created and for the constructors, we have features called new there that have the arguments as in the Java code and that use then uh, intrinsic math methods and reflection to create the corresponding Java instance. And also static methods are uh, implemented in this static feature, my class static. And finally, as shown before, there's also a routine generated to provide a handy shortcut to access the features in this static uh, feature. So what does this mean now when we, when we want to use uh, the Java code within Fusion? So we have Java code here on the left side and the counterpart in uh, Fusion would be first to create an instance. We go with the fully qualified name to the static my class, uh, call new on that and give the argument, in this case, test. To call a method, we can just use the result and call the method on that. To call a static method, we uh, use uh, the synonym uh, feature that was created to access uh, the static class and call the static method. Uh, of course, uh, we can uh, introduce a temporary field here uh, as a shortcut to hold this unit value. And again, this doesn't create any code. Uh, so uh, we can simplify the code by introduction of this my class field, which actually holds a reference to the static feature created for my class. So we call, can call new on it, or we can call the static method on it. For all the instance methods, we need an object created by new anyway. And we can also, of course, uh, use a different name for this static class unit type if you want to save typing here. What do we do about Java exceptions? Fusion doesn't have support for exceptions, so we have to use a Fusion mechanism. And the mechanism that is provided by Fusion are choice types. So choice types is a unit, unit type 
that can have types or values of different types. And the default or standard library type for uh, things like exceptions is outcome, which is, which is a generic type uh, with a type parameter t. And that can then, with a match statement, uh, be used to extract the result type or the error or the exception that has occurred. Uh, even Java methods then return void, and that can return uh, with a checked exception, uh, will be turned into features with the result outcome, but in this case, outcome with the type parameter unit. In contrast, unchecked exceptions are currently handled by directly causing a runtime error and stopping the system. Uh, but in future, in the future, we might change this to use an exception monad, which is currently not supported yet. Um, the inheritance relation present in the original Java code uh, is regenerated in uh, the Fusion code generated for the Java classes. So the Fusion features inherit from the corresponding Fusion features that the original Java classes inherit from. So the usage and assignment rules of uh, these features are very similar and feel very similar to the original Java code. Uh, what do we do about interfaces in the original Java code? Since Fusion supports multiple inheritance, interfaces are essentially treated the same way as classes when Fusion code is generated. Uh, what do we do about overloading? Java overloading is much more permissive than overloading in Fusion, uh, while Fusion uh, allows overloading only in the number of arguments. So a, f a feature with two arguments is a different feature than a feature with three arguments, but there's no overloading in the argument types. The way uh, argument type overloading is supposed to be handled in Fusion is via unit, no, via union types uh, that allow different types and allow to be checked with a match statement. <clears throat> so what we do in the FC Java tool is, in case there is a name clash because of overloading of uh, Java methods that have the same number of uh, arguments, uh, we choose a short name for using a heuristic for the most common types like integers and more complex derived types. Uh, we fall back to uh, name mangling, very similar to those of you who have used the JNI interface might know this. It's a bit painful, but there is no good alternative at the moment. Um, so here's an example now how Fusion and the FC Java tool can be used to implement a uh, web server using the Java Net and Java IO APIs. So first, for convenience, uh, we create copies of uh, Java Net and Java I.O. packages uh, in the two fields, Net and I.O. If you want to open a, a, a socket at port 8080, we can just use Net Server Socket New at that port and then match the result with, if, uh, to check if an exception has occurred, print an error. Otherwise, uh, we have received an instance of server socket, and then we can call accept on that, which again could cause an exception. So we can match on this or uh, extract an, in the next step the input stream from that. So the code is very similar to the Java code that one would write. Uh, the next thing I would like to present is the OpenJDK or Java backends of the Fusion language. Uh, Currently, Fusion comes with a Java interpreter backend, but this interpreter backend is the first backend that was implemented for that language. And it is kind of a quick and dirty hack of a backend. It allows, it uses direct accesses to the front end, to the abstract syntax tree, and it doesn't really respect the uh, design of the tool chain. 
So the interpreter here, which is supposed to be based on the intermediate representation, instead directly uses our data from the front end and from the middle end to run fusion applications. Um, the uh, interpreter uh, stores or uh, stores fusion instances as Java objects, while they have two fields containing arrays, one an object array for references stored in, uh, in that object and one integer array for all non-reference values. So there's not much optimization going on at this point. So we need a better backend for running on a JVM and the planned bytecode backend is what I want to present quickly here. Uh, this uh, backend is supposed to fit well in the design, so it's supposed to be based completely on the Fusion Intermediate representation. Uh, currently we have a, a C backend that does, does this, that only uses the Intermediate representation to create C code and then backend. The same thing should happen for the JVM backend. So the input of that backend is the Fusion Intermediate code, uh, which is a representation of the Fusion application using so-called Fusion classes with a double Z. Uh, and classes are features specialized for the actual type parameters and for the surrounding features, the actual outer class of that features. There's five kinds of classes in the intermediate representation. They are routines, which is classes that contain code, there are fields, there are intrinsics that have to be implemented by the backend, there are abstract uh, classes, and there are choice classes which represent unit types. And classes of routine kind, as I said, contain code. And this code is a very simple uh, bytecode kind of code that uses just 14 different instructions and instructions of the, of the form uh, assign, a call, a match, a uh, way to access the current instance, constants, pop, and so on. Uh, the intermediate code has no loops. There's only one branch instruction, which is a match. And uh, looping code uh, is represented by tail recursive functions. So this makes the code generator and, and also the analysis easier. Uh, because you have a very simple uh, branching structure in the intermediate code. Um, so there are some important implementation decisions that we have to make for the bytecode backend. Uh, how, one is how to implement dynamic dispatch in Fusion, where we have multiple inheritance. And there are two candidates for that, which is invoke interface and invoke dynamic. Um, uh, invoke interface seems to fit and seems to be the better approach because this is highly optimized by most VMs, uh, while invoke dy dynamic is probably more expensive. And uh, the idea is to implement uh, reference instances of Fusion as Java classes that implement all the reference, uh, all the interfaces that were generated for their super features, and that gets specialized for the type argument. So the generated bytecode should not use any type parameters, no generics, no. And fusion value instances, in contrast to that, should be treated as inline primitive types. So if you have something like a point with x and y fields uh, as a value type in the generated Java bytecode. This will be treated as two values, one for x and one for y. Um, the next steps in the development plan is there has to be better support for the intermediate files. At the moment, the module files are kind of implemented, but the application and FOIA files are not implemented in the way that they are written out to a file system, but they just exist as uh, intermediate state in uh, 
the Fusion implementation. Uh, we want to develop simple analysis tools to find things like that all fields are initialized before they are used and that code is immutable once it becomes accessible to the outside. There's also there's a C backend already, but there's some uh, parts still missing. The C backend doesn't have a garbage collector and doesn't support floats yet. And there is no, no counterpart to the FC Java tool in the C world. So uh, we need a bit, uh, some way to interface C code and libraries. A lot of work needs to be done on the standard library of Fusion. Uh, in particular, decisions on how to model I.O. and threat communication and immutability have to be made. One idea to do that, how to do that, it would be using what I call automatic monadic lifting. Um, but this is just an early idea. You find some details on that on the design area on the Flang.dev website. So that brings me to the end. I hope I could share a bit of the excitement about this new language uh, uh, with you. All the tools used to implement Fusion at the moment are implemented in Java and OpenJDK is an important execution target uh, for Fusion. Um, we need to grow our team definitely. We are way too small at the moment. I'm happy to get any developer feedback back and also we are looking for long-term funding to grow this project. So please get back to me if you I could spark your interest. I'm happy to hear from you. Thank you.